really enjoyed presenting Dr. Osam. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tamer, and thank you, Professor Alia, for uh, inviting me to uh, uh, this wonderful uh, uh, seminar. Uh, first of all, I would like just to let you know that uh, Alexandria is so dear to my heart. Uh, you know, I did my internship in Alexandria, I did my honeymoon in Alexandria, and uh, I have a heart which is uh, living in Alexandria up till now. Uh, while in uh, in Boston, uh, so the uh, you know uh, uh, thank you for uh, you know inviting a diabetologist to uh, uh, this topic. Uh, but you know the uh, whole idea of uh, nutrition and uh, and diabetes uh, took s significant amount of my uh, practical life up till now. Uh, so I, I I think it is a very important topic. Uh, for discussion, especially that we have a lot of new information. But uh, just to go back to what uh, Hippocrates uh, mentioned in the old days, uh, saying that uh, let uh, food be the medicine and let medicine be the food. And uh, every day we uh, believe that this is uh, uh, one of the most important statements that had been said in the history. Uh, and we see every day how nutrition can modify uh, some diseases, especially uh, diabetes. But I would like just to say for thyroid, uh, foods alone will not cure thyroid disease. Uh, however, a combination uh, of the right nutrition and medication can help restore uh, thyroid function and minimize symptoms. And that's the aim, uh, uh, because we, uh, we frequently prescribe medication, we diagnose cases, uh, but when it comes to nutrition, we are short of giving our patients the right advice. Uh, so I hope uh, by the end of this presentation, um, you will get a glimpse of what is needed to be done uh, for patients with the thyroid disease. So let me uh, first tell you uh, the objectives of my presentation. Uh, first, we'll uh, enumerate with you the modifiable factors uh, by nutrition in hypothyroidism. Uh, uh, and then we will explore uh, food that enhance metabolism. Uh, maybe uh, some, some of you don't know that certain food can enhance metabolism. That's actually uh, true. And then we will discuss minerals that affect thyroid function. And uh, we have uh, at least three very important minerals uh, that we need to be sure that uh, our patients are uh, sufficiently supplied with those minerals. And then we will uh, uh, make some hints about uh, goitrogens. Goitrogens uh, is very important because they are in every uh, uh, food that we eat and how they uh, will impact and how we can mitigate their, uh, their drawbacks. And then finally, I will uh, describe the ideal food for patients with hypothyroidism. So let me uh, first start by, if you have someone with hypothyroidism, uh, whether the cause is Hashimoto's thyroiditis or iodine deficiency or secondary hypothyroidism, there are several factors that you can modify by nutrition. Uh, as I mentioned, the slow metabolism on the top of them, uh, which leads mostly to weight gain and iodine deficiency. And this is, uh, again, a very important topic. And then hypercholesterolemia, uh, which uh, usually secondary to hypothyroidism, and then weight gain, which frequently you will see uh, in those patients, uh, although many uh, are not, and then finally fatigue and hair loss. And you can see that those by nutrition, you can minimize all those symptoms uh, to a great extent, and you can have a much better quality of life. So let me start by a slow metabolism. And we know that when uh, people have hypothyroidism or even subclinical hypothyroidism, they have uh, definitely slow metabolism and they have uh, lower basal metabolic rate. So the uh, only way to enhance uh, metabolism is to increase protein intake. And uh, protein increase what's called thermic effect of food, uh, also called, uh, called uh, diet-induced thermogenesis. So diet-induced thermogenesis uh, is basically the percentage of the increase in energy expenditure on the top of the basal metabolic rate. 
so uh, different food categories or macronutrients have different uh, diet induced thermogenesis. Like, for example, if you eat protein, the uh, increase in energy expenditure will be 15 to 30 percent. While if you uh, eat carbohydrates, the increase uh, uh, will be around uh, 5 to 10 percent. And finally, if you eat fat, uh, the increase will be around zero to three percent. So people with hypothyroidism uh, need to eat more protein. So just to give you an example, if someone increased protein intake to around 30 uh, percent, which is up from the casual 15 to 20 percent, or even uh, typically now is around 11 percent in some, some places, uh, this will have a huge impact because this will increase uh, energy expenditure by 891 kilojoule per day uh, on the resting metabolic rate. So protein uh, is very important for those patients to increase uh, metabolism. So the second point is iodine deficiency. And uh, not necessarily everyone with, uh, with thyroid problem has iodine deficiency, but you need to be sure that they get, they get enough iodine because um, uh, this is uh, definitely a risk of hypothyroidism. Uh, but it's a very common uh, uh, scenario across the globe. So if you take the globe and you evaluate them, uh, you will find nearly one third of the world population are uh, iodine deficient. Uh, this is not that common in uh, uh, developed countries where iodine salt is used and uh, iodine uh, rich seafood is uh, widely available. Uh, of course, in Alexandria, you don't have any problem with this. You live by the sea. Uh, but uh, it is very, very important to be sure that uh, your patient get the right amount of uh, iodine. Uh, in reality, uh, iodine supplement is not necessarily most of the time because uh, natural food and uh, um, especially Mediterranean food will, will give enough amount of iodine. Maybe you will need uh, to be optimal uh, in hypothyroid and pregnancy, for example and be sure that the uh, patient receive every day around 150 microgram of iodine per, per day. But you have to be very careful that if you push hard and you get more iodine, uh, then you may induce uh, thyroid autoimmunity, thyrotoxicosis, iodine induced goiter and hypothyroidism. So you are uh, uh, between two scenarios, iodine deficiency and then normal iodine and then extra uh, doses of iodine. So we have to be very careful in, in that scenario. So what food that has enough amount of uh, iodine? You Definitely the iodine salt, uh, which is used across the globe everywhere right now, especially in uh, developed countries. I think in Egypt, uh, uh, you have iodine salt. But if you don't have it, uh, seafood, especially uh, all kinds of fish, uh, and uh, dairy products and eggs, uh, have enough amount of iodine and uh, especially egg yolk has a lot of iodine. So uh, 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 be sure that your patients will always uh, eat enough fish and eat enough uh, eggs and dairy. And this will, uh, will be more than enough to uh, provide the amount of iodine that uh, your patient will need. Then the following point is hypercholesterolemia. And uh, uh, a lot of people think that you can modify hypercholesterolemia only by nutrition. Uh, you can definitely do improvement in uh, triglycerides and HDL, especially if you lower carbohydrates down. Uh, but changing the LDL is, is a problem. And most patients with higher LDL may end up uh, needing statin or other uh, medication to lower uh, LDL. But there is a lot that you can do in, uh, by food, um, not only to treat it, but to uh, minimize the aggravation of the, uh, the situation of hypercholesterolemia. So let me give you an example. Uh, people in general to lower LDL, they need to avoid entirely trans fat. Uh, as you know, trans fat is the worst type of fat. This is in uh, uh, margarine and partially hydrogenated uh, oil. And um, Harvard School of Public Health showed that if you uh, uh, eat one gram uh, every day of trans fat, risk for uh, coronary artery disease will go up by 93%. So uh, now um, in the United States, starting from uh, early this year, 
there is zero transfer fat in the entire country. And many countries did the same. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Egypt and Pakistan are still the highest countries in the globe that are still using uh, trans fat. So trans fat is H uh, LDL and lower significantly HDL. So this is one of the worst fat that you should avoid. So you find it in shortening, in cakes, uh, in uh, many of the over the shelf uh, food products and, uh, and candies and so, and so on. Uh, then reduction of saturated fat from meat and processed meat. Uh, uh, we found recently that uh, fat from uh, saturated fat from uh, dairy has no problem. Uh, we just uh, finished the study, uh, randomized the clinical trial, uh, comparing high uh, dairy, uh, high, high fat dairy for, uh, versus low fat dairy, and we didn't find any difference in lipid profile, or even A1C or even body weight. And many others are showing that uh, saturated fat in dairy is different than saturated fat in meat in its impact. So reducing saturated fat from meat and especially processed meat because preservatives like nitrites and nitrates also increase the risk for cardiovascular disease. Then uh, uh, much use of monounsaturated fat, especially olive oil, uh, canola oil and avocado. This is uh, a kind of fat that uh, lower LDL and increase HDL. So it will be uh, very beneficial on, on both ways. And then you have uh, fatty fish, uh, especially malt fish, samak uh, al-bori, which is fatty fish. It has a lot of uh, omega-3, and you can see it in uh, in deep water fish as well, uh, and cold uh, cold water fish. Uh, and if you have an EPA which is very high, uh, omega-3 reduce triglycerides significantly. And then bone and saturated uh, fat, you can see it in vegetable oils, except. Uh, 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 coconut oil and palm oil, and then you see it in nuts and seeds. Those are all beneficial. And then uh, finally, you increase soluble fiber. And soluble fiber are uh, found in fruits. Uh, the fiber in uh, vegetables are in insoluble fiber. And insoluble fiber may uh, help the colon, but uh, soluble fiber will reduce uh, uh, cholesterol absorption uh, significantly. Uh, around 10% maybe reduction. Uh, that can 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 get from uh, soluble fiber. So you can advise your patient with some dietary information that can help them with the high bar cholesterol level. And then when it comes to weight gain, uh, uh, weight gain is 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 a problem, and especially in uh, in Egypt, uh, it became a, a huge problem. Uh, uh, and especially among women, you can see significant increase in in body weight, and the percentage of people who are obese now is is more than ever. So uh, to uh, uh, lead to a very uh, efficient weight, weight reduction, uh, similar to what we do in our programs, we aim always to reduce body weight by five to 10%. Uh, but people need to know what exactly the dietary uh, intervention, and I will just give you a very quick glimpse on dietary composition that can help weight loss uh, and then we will ask about exercise, what type of exercise, what duration, and what frequency of exercise. And then there is something called cognitive behavior modification, and also change in some medication that cause weight gain. And especially people are taking uh, some of the diabetes medication that cause weight gain. But the most important is that how you can maintain all of those and help that person to maintain weight loss for longer uh, duration. So let me, let me start the first by dietary uh, intervention. Uh, because changing macronutrients, uh, even without cutting caloric intake that much, may have a good impact on, on, on weight and weight loss. So the ideal composition that we, we think that work for weight loss, and we've tested that for many years, we have programs that using it for almost 15 years, is to cut caloric intake just by 500, not that much. And uh, even 250 will be fine. But the most important is to cut carbohydrates down uh, to around 40-45% and lower glycemic index of carbohydrates. This is again very, very important. So the carbohydrates has no impact on the postprandial blood glucose level or postprandial uh, level profile. And then, as I mentioned, increase protein intake to around 30% or 1 to 1.5 gram 
per kilogram of uh, body weight, if you would like to calculate the or body weight, and I prefer uh, that type of calculation. So the absolute amount of protein will, will be enough. Increase fiber to around 14 uh, gram per 1,000 calories. So you will get around uh, 30 grams of uh, fiber per day. Uh, then monounsaturated fat. And as I mentioned, cut saturated fat from meat and lower sodium. Uh, Mediterranean diet, which uh, is a very common in Egypt, is, uh, is a very, very good diet that can be used in that scenario. But I think we started to be uh, more westernized in the diet and increase carbohydrates and processed, uh, highly processed carbohydrates uh, is significantly up now. So if we go back and uh, correct all of those, I, I think it will be uh, very valuable. And you can see uh, gradual weight loss over time. And as I mentioned, protein uh, is, is, is very important. Then exercise is, uh, is very important. We know that exercise reduces uh, visceral fat, which uh, leads to insulin resistance and, and atherosclerosis as well. Uh, blood pressure goes down, lipid profile improves, usual exercise, raise HDL up, lower triglyceride. It may not have a huge impact on LDL, but you will see uh, um, uh, a reduction in, uh, in, in blood in, uh, in triglyceride and increase in, uh, in HDL. And then it uh, also improves uh, uh, metabolic control if someone has pre-diabetes or diabetes, increase physical fitness, quality of life, uh, they will can maintain weight loss for longer duration if they maintain good level of exercise. And finally, it improves uh, vascular uh, uh, resistance and, and improve it and increase blood flow. And that blood flow, per se, will uh, uh, create a shear stress that reduce, produce nitric oxide on the lead blood vessels. That's why it is very beneficial. But what type of exercise uh, should be done? People should do uh, 10 minutes of each type of exercise on the screen, stretching uh, for 10 minutes, uh, aerobics for another 10 minutes, and strength exercise for 10 minutes. Uh, those are very important because the stretching reduce uh, chance for injury, increase mobilization, increase range of movement, uh, increase blood flow. Uh, people can do it in the morning, just 10 minutes. And then aerobic exercise could be just walking, fast walking, uh, after lunch for just 10 minutes. And in the evening in front of the television, uh, 10 minutes of stretch exercise, which can be uh, more, than, more than enough. Mind that 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes. Those are 30 minutes, uh, 210 minutes per, uh, per week. In people with thyroid, aerobic exercise is very important and it pushes the uh, basal metabolic rate in a good, in a good direction even for longer uh, duration. The strength exercise with protein is also very important because thus you maintain the bulk of the muscle mass during weight loss. Because we will, in general, above age of 40, start to lose significant amount of muscle mass. And it can be as easy as using a stretch band uh, and uh, do most of the exercises by stretch band, which can be very simple, and we will come back it when, when the trial. So uh, this can help uh, significantly uh, with the weight issue. Then I will move now to minerals that affect the thyroid gland. And uh, I will mention two important minerals. Uh, and um, uh, we need to be sure that your patient is, uh, is getting enough uh, of those elements. Uh, the first one is selenium. And um, you, you should know that thyroid is the organ with the highest amount of selenium per gram of tissue in the body. Uh, selenium is very, very important for the thyroid function. And uh, thyroid, selenium is needed, uh, you know, this is an antioxidant needed uh, for the antioxidant function and also enhancing the metabolism of the thyroid. Uh, selenium uh, supplementation of patients with autoimmune thyroiditis uh, is usually associated with the reduction in the, uh, the anti-thyroid peroxidase, antibody level, and improved thyroid ultrasound features and improve quality of life significantly. So uh, uh, selenium is, is, is again very important, but uh, don't try to do a selenium supplement uh, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, I will say outside the, uh, you know, uh, food supplement because you may end up with higher dose of selenium, which is, is, is not needed. Especially in patients with Graves' disease, uh, selenium uh, will be very important for the eye complications 
it will delay the progression of the eye complication significantly and as I mentioned, in improve the quality of life. Uh, most food has enough amount of uh, selenium, but if you need just to be uh, specific on what food that increase uh, selenium, uh, sardine and tuna uh, is very, very good source of selenium. Eggs, as I mentioned, and eggs has significant amount of selenium. And then finally, uh, you will find in, uh, uh, in legumes, which uh, people in Egypt eat a lot, bees and beans, and uh, and all of those uh, can be very good source of selenium. Uh, but as I mentioned, supplementation uh, may provide a large dose, and selenium may be toxic in large amount. So be sure that your uh, patient uh, will have a good source of from nutrition. Um, don't give them uh, too much supplement that uh, contains selenium. Uh, but most of the dietary supplements right now and over the counter are, are not very high in selenium, but in general, just to be careful uh, for higher, higher doses. Uh, so those are the so sources that uh, your patient will definitely need. The other salt that is important is zinc. And uh, as you know, zinc deficiency may decrease thyroid hormone level and also uh, reduce resting metabolic rate. So, uh, zinc supplement uh, have a favorable effect on the thyroid hormone levels, especially on total T3 and resting metabolic rate. So be sure that your patient will get enough amount of zinc, especially from natural food. Uh, uh, zinc deficiency is very rare, and especially very rare in developed countries because uh, it is uh, abundant in the food supply. Uh, but if you would like also to know um, uh, what food that has enough amount of zinc, uh, just uh, think of shellfish fish, and uh, red meat, of course, so, uh, lean red meat, and then chicken. Those are three good sources of zinc. Uh, I think uh, <coughs> it's opened now uh, that much. Uh, you know, I, I'm missing the shellfish in, in Alexandria. This can be fantastic. And then the fish and the lean meat. Those are, uh, are very good sources of, uh, of zinc. Uh, and uh, supplements are not uh, uh, needed most of the time. Uh, so you can get zinc and selenium in a very good way by uh, natural, natural type of food. Then uh, uh, goitrogens. Goitrogens, uh, uh, these are certain types of food that, uh, you know, if you give them, the, uh, especially in the, in the presence of iodine deficiency, you will end up with uh, a larger thyroid to a great extent. That's why they give the name of goitrogens. So, uh, as I mentioned, they are in many, uh, many food that we eat every day. But the good news is that once they are cooked, um, the uh, goitrogens effect is, is gone. So, uh, this is very, very important. So, if you uh, have your patients cooking the, this, uh, this types of food, uh, then the goitrogen effect will be will be minimal. So the food that uh, contains significant amount of goitrogens is soya. Uh, uh, soya is very very common now as the meat substitute and source of vegetable protein across the globe. Uh, and then some uh, vegetables like uh, cabbage, cauliflower, spinach, and broccoli and kale. Uh, those all has a good amount of goitrogens. And among fruits, you strawberry and peaches, they have uh, a good amount of goitrogens, and then peanuts and pine nuts, uh, which are frequently used as well. Those are uh, not a good idea for someone who has uh, iodine deficiency. Uh, so the chances for enlarged thyroid will, will, will be higher. So avoid them or use them as cooked, as I mentioned. Let me end up with uh, a question that most people ask. If I have a patient with hypothyroidism, what type of food I will give them? So to make it simple and, and, and summary, eggs, uh, as I mentioned, uh, eggs are very, very good. The alpon, the uh, uh, white uh, uh, albumin will give enough protein and the yolk will give enough uh, uh, selenium and also uh, will give enough iodine, which uh, can be a very, very good source um, in, uh, for, for patients. Uh, then lean meat, uh, as I mentioned, that's you reduce saturated fat, uh, and meat is uh, is a very good uh, source, as as I mentioned, and poultry uh, for uh, zinc, and then seafood, as I mentioned, uh, especially 
uh, fatty fish and also salmon and tuna, uh, shrimps, uh, shellfish. Uh, those are uh, are all also very uh, very good sources. Uh, and then vegetables, and as I mentioned, uh, we need them in moderation, and they need the vegetables to be cooked, uh, so the glycogens are uh, are absent. Um, and then fruits, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, fruits has uh, soluble fiber, which is 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 very good. But uh, fruits as well is a very nice source of fiber. Uh, and will be very helpful for those people. Gluten-free uh, grains, um, especially rice and flax and shire, uh, those are all very good. And then dairy products, as I mentioned, uh, especially yogurt and cheese, uh, those are all uh, uh, good type of food that you can supplement. And then if you need to give uh, beverages, uh, avoid caffeinated and give water and non-caffeinated uh, beverages. Those are uh, kind of diet that you can recommend for a patient with hypothyroidism uh, that will provide them with enough selenium, with enough zinc, with enough iodine, and enough fiber, and will help them to reduce uh, cholesterol to a great extent, LDL cholesterol, and also maybe help them uh, for weight loss if you uh, uh, increase the protein and create a thermogenesis, uh, as I mentioned, and also uh, cut carbohydrates uh, significantly down, uh, process the carbohydrates. Uh, that's why we said here, uh, gluten, gluten free. So uh, to end up and uh, to take the practice message from my presentation, uh, increased protein intake is very important in case in patients with hypothyroidism. It enhances metabolism by increasing thermogenic effect of food. Always remember uh, to give your patient enough protein, uh, fish, poultry, uh, and uh, uh, vegetable proteins as well, and lean meat uh, can be a very good source uh, in that scenario. Uh, food improve iodine deficiency includes fish, eggs, and dairy. So be sure that those are uh, among the food that you will give to your patient, especially uh, in patients with hypothyroid and pregnancy, uh, those kind of, uh, of food that will, will be definitely needed. Um, as I mentioned, selenium supplement is very, very important in patients with Graves' disease because it reduces the progression in eye uh, complications and also improves the quality of life. So be sure that selenium uh, is, is, is uh, supplied in a good amount. Uh, then zinc supplement, uh, as I mentioned, has a very good effect on the thyroid hormone, especially total T3 and rest, resting metabolic rate. And uh, there are certain uh, types of food that has zinc in a good amount, and we mentioned uh, shellfish and the meat and, uh, and poultry. And then uh, goitrogens are found in many food, so you want to be able to avoid them, but uh, inactivate them by cooking, which uh, can be uh, very valuable. And then finally, certain food are ideal for patients with hypothyroidism, uh, including eggs, dairy, seafood, gluten-free gra grains, and certain vegetables and fruits. Uh, with this, I, I think we covered a lot uh, in a short period of time, and I hope uh, this will be uh, valuable for everyone. With that, I would like to thank you so much for good listening.